all the attention right now with Manchester United struggling is on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And that shouldn't be the case because it lets the man who's been in control of the chaos in the background get away with it. Like Cepetto holding his strings over Pinocchio, Ed Woodward has been in control of United's managers and in control of the chaos that's happened in the last six years, six, seven, eight years, a long time at United. Roy Keane once said that Jose Mourinho's players threw him under the bus and they would do the same thing to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Woodward has been throwing managers under the bus for the last six, seven years. So I think it's about time somebody exposed him and threw him under the bus. That's exactly what I want to do in this video. I've already done one of these, but he lies so much that you have to do more than one of them. And in this video, I'm gonna run through quotes from Ed Woodward from the annual staff meeting at Old Trafford and from his interview with Andy Mitten in United We Stand and exposing them for the lies that they are. For a man who usually sits so quietly in the background, lurking in the shadows, isn't it incredible how much Ed Woodward has been speaking in the public in the last couple of months, from his interview with Andy Mitten in United We Stand to the minutes from his annual staff meeting being leaked and all over the back pages of the British newspapers. For me, it screams one thing and one thing only. Woodward is finally starting to feel the pressure on his job that he should be feeling after six years of catastrophic failure. And it's a PR campaign from Woodward designed to protect ultimately his own image more than United. And that's the, probably the most worrying thing about all of these comments from Woodward. But he's gone from being this quiet CEO in the background that you'd never hear apart from an investor's call to one giving interviews to United's fanzines and comments being all over the back pages. A massive change in tact and a real sign of the times that Woodward is finally starting to feel the squeeze, either from above and from the owners and from Glazers or from down below, or maybe both. Woodward maybe finally realises his position is not infallible. And what I want to do is exert some pressure from below, from the fans, and call Woodward out for the lies that he continues to tell the press. And it's not exactly hard to prove these lies wrong, yet he continues to do it. I've already done one of these videos before and I'll continue to do them the more he lies. It's as simple as that. So what I'm going to do is run through quotes from his interview with Andy Mitten in United We Stand and from that annual meeting and call them out for the bullshit they are. Now back in 2018, Woodward declared that United's on the pitch success or failures did not affect the commercial side of the club. And I've proven in the last video that is just a line now with United doing so poorly, it's now affecting the commercial revenues. Take a look at this quick chart from TIFO and their excellent video on United and Woodward and the finances. It's flatlined. And the commercial side of things at United is starting to stagnate. And adding on top of that, this is what Woodward had to say at his annual meeting. He said, like other football clubs, our commercial business allows us to reinvest in the football side. It's how these two interact with each other at United that results in us having a competitive advantage in this area. What's important is the commercial side is never allowed to take priority over the football side. I really do have to wonder whether Woodward has said this enough times that he's convinced himself that it's the truth. But it's not the truth. Fergie was an incredible manager and only he could have guided United through that leverage deal from the Glazers to the point where we were continuing with our success. Any other manager would have collapsed. But Fergie managed it, and since he's gone, the wheels have come off completely. But Woodward cannot surely believe this, because it's so not true. United are a commercial beast, and it's only in the last four or five years where our commercial growth has stagnated that we've properly started to invest in players. An absolute ton of money has been spent on players, but Woodward's been spending it. And it's like giving a drunk money to go into an off license to buy booze. Just loves everything. Want that, want this, want that. Doesn't actually buy what he needs. And United haven't done that. Our investment has been substantial in terms of new players, but it's been largely woeful. And Woodward has been the man at the top of that. But to say that the commercial side is never allowed to take priority. Come on, man, who are you kidding? We know that is the case. Moving on from that, 
There is another quote which is very easy to debunk from Woodward. He said, there is a myth that we have non-football people making football decisions, and I think it's insulting to the brilliant people who work on the football side of this club. Come on now. You've only got to look at what Louis van Gaal said after his time as Manchester United manager. This isn't just an angry fan. This is a man who was brought in by Ed Woodward to work with Ed Woodward and firsthand has seen the problems that he causes at United. Speaking in June 2019, Van Gaal said, at Manchester United, Ed Woodward was installed as CEO, somebody with zero understanding of football who was previously an investment banker. It cannot be a good thing when a club is run solely from a commercially driven perspective. And this is a manager who was brought in by Woodward to work underneath him, completely proving that Woodward was just outright lying about non-football people being involved in the decision-making process at United and that United isn't a commercially driven beast. I mean, what more do you want? It's not hard to debunk these quotes that Woodward spreads as the truth. And I think that's the maddest thing about all of it. It's not as if his lies are sort of hard to decipher and hard to prove as lies. It's dead easy. And that's the mad thing about it. Woodward is just a... He's an obvious liar. And you can prove it so simply. Now, maybe United's footballing decisions now, from this summer, maybe Woodward has been taking a step back. With Maguire and Wan-Bissaka and James, I thought we made smart signings. I thought we operated better as a football club this summer. So maybe things have changed. But it can't just brush under the carpet the chaos that has happened in the last six years that he has orchestrated. And again, I'm going to continue to bang this drum until something happens, and probably something never will happen. But fans need to be aware of it. Solskjaer, yes, he's to blame for everything that's going on at the moment. Not all of it, though. And the reason that I will continue to back him is I know that if Solskjaer gets sacked, the next manager who comes in, the same thing is going to happen. One or two years down the line, we'll be in the same damn situation. That is why I'm trying to stand in support of him at the moment. But of all the comments and quotes and lies from Woodward, it's this one from his interview with Andy Mitten in United We Stand, which has infuriated me the most. He said the debt is long term, structured and similar to some other football clubs. It's a fixed amount for a fixed period of time, which results in it being fairly cheap to service. It's just under 2% of our annual revenue each year. So it doesn't really have an impact on us. Where do you even begin with this? How can Woodward come out and say that the debt really hasn't had an impact on United? Over £1 billion has left United on interest repayments, on financing the leverage deal that the Glazers bought United with back in 2005. It's been the shackle and chains on United for 15 years. So for him to try and justify what is the unjustifiable is the biggest insult that he could have said. Because it's been the biggest hurdle for United. And Fergie was the man who navigated his way through it. But Fergie also had the likes of Scholes, Rooney, Van Nistelrooy, Keane, Ferdinand. All these quality players that the Glazers sort of walked into and then never properly replaced when they left. How Woodward can say it's cheap is mind-boggling. And he's also lying about the percentages as well when you look into the data. It's not just under 2% of annual revenue, it was 3.6% in 2018-19 and since 2013-14, it's total 4.7%. But look at that stat at the bottom. In the 2008-09 season, our debt costs totaled 42% of our club's revenues. It's no wonder Ronaldo was replaced with Obertan and Owen Nearly half of our club's money went on repaying the Glazers' debt that they put on United when they bought us on a loan. That's fairly cheap. Don't try and pull the wool over everybody's eyes there, Woodward. That's an outright, it's an outrageous lie. That's the worst of it all. The debt has been the biggest problem at United. And it hasn't gone away. It's still over 500 million now. Yes, we've got cash in the bank, but 
Are we going to spend it? Probably on the wrong players. Hope not, but you can't say that it hasn't shackled United. It's been horrendous. The last quote I want to talk about from Woodward is from his annual meeting where he goes into some detail about the principles that Solskjaer has that he shares at United. It's all about attacking football, trophies, about the youth coming through. He also talks about reinvestment in the academy team. But it's this one quote I really want to focus on. He said there's a lot more we need to do in that area in terms of the academy, but that's coming in the next few years. We know this is a strong competitive advantage for us and an area that we will continue to focus on and invest in. But this remains the heart of the club. Two things I want to say here. Number one, if that were true, United's academy would not have been allowed to sort of rot in the background for years until the heavy reinvestment that's happened in the last three or four years that's brought it back up. We allowed City to take over the academy throne in Manchester. And we're still clambering to try and get back to where we were previously. But if it was the heart of the club, that reinvestment would not have been needed because the investment would have been continued the entire way through. And point number two, which is a major one here. If the academy really was the heart of United, we would never have appointed Jose Mourinho as manager. He is the antithesis of youth football. He is a man who was brought in for the short term to win trophies, and he did that. But to say that the academy is the heart of the club is not correct. United were in a commercially poor position and we needed trophies immediately to help re-establish the brand. That's why Mourinho was brought in. Now, at the time, I said it was the right thing to do because we had gone down the path of Moyes and Van Howe. But if the academy was the focal point and the heart of the club, Mourinho would never have come anywhere near United. It's why Mourinho was never considered an option when Fergie retired a few years later. We changed our tone. But don't say the academy is the heart of United. It's part of it. And it should be the heart. But it's not. Otherwise, Mourinho would never have been appointed. What do David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer all have in common? They've all been failed by Ed Woodward as CEO of Man United. And it is about time that came full circle. And that the fingers were pointed towards... I mean, we've been finger pointed at Woodward for time. And I know it's not going to change anything, but I just get frustrated. This is why I get frustrated with all the anger that's coming towards Solskjaer at the moment. He is part of the problem, but he's not the problem. And it's this cyclical process that we're going to keep going through. And if Solskjaer gets sacked and the next manager comes in, the next manager will be failed by Woodward and the Glazers and he'll be sacked again and will repeat the process again. That's why I'm continuing to back Solskjaer, because I know what will happen to the next one. And I'm bored of that process. I'm bored of Solskjaer getting all the blame right now and Woodward just sitting there in the background and nobody saying anything about him. He is the main problem. So are the Glazers, all of them. But it's about time we really talked about it and continue to talk about it. Don't let it go into the background, get quiet. Keep it loud. That's what I'm trying to do with this video. Now let me know what you think about the whole situation with, with the Glazers, anything you want in the comments below. Hopefully this video maybe showed you some more information you didn't know. If it did, drop a like on it and subscribe to United People's TV if you are new. Until next time though, take it easy.